Today on ZZZ Made Easy, we're going to learn about the Perfect Assist system. Probably one of my favorite aspects of the game, Perfect Assist involves swapping to another agent right after an enemy does an attack with a yellow flash. There are two types of Perfect Assist. One is the Defensive Assist, which is when your agent parries the enemy and makes an incredibly satisfying sound. The other is an Evasive Assist, which is just a dodge that puts you into vital view, aka this game's version of the bullet time slow-mo effect. Agents either have the parry or the dodge, and after activating these moves, you can do an assist follow-up attack by hitting the basic attack button. The perfect assist action does cause an assist point, which you can see in the bottom right around your swap agent button. You start with 6 points, and every perfect assist costs 1 point, with some heavy hitting attacks costing 2 points to block. To regain assist points, every time you do a chain attack, you get back 1 point. If you use an ultimate, you regain 3 points. Not sure if this is going to apply to future defense agents, but currently the one defense agent, Ben, when he uses his ultimate, you gain an additional 3 points. This means Ben's ult will fully replenish all 6 assist points. While well, you can just dodge attacks with some well-timed dashes in ZZZ, dodge does have a short cooldown after 2 immediate uses. Some attacks may also be better to parry because you can interrupt the enemy's attack entirely, and defensive assists do apply daze to the enemy. I'm not 100% sure, but there is a Days Chain Multiplier in the description. Against certain moves, some agents can parry multiple times back to back. I believe this is what the Days Chain value applies to. To parry back to back moves, you don't need to be a fighting game evil god. This happens automatically after the initial parry, just don't touch any buttons. However, big bosses can also hit you with heavy hits to turn your screen black and white. If this happens, you will not be able to do a follow-up attack after. You must do another perfect assist or dodge the next attack. Let's now discuss the defensive assist agents. You may have noticed there are actually two types of defensive assist. Some agents have a stronger parry that costs less assist points to use. Against weaker mobs, everyone's going to use one assist point regardless, but when fighting bigger bosses, they will cost two assist points to parry, and the higher level bosses are much more aggressive, which means you chew through assist points very quickly. If an agent has the stronger parry, then their perfect assist only costs 1 point, and this is honestly pretty useful. The list of agents with the stronger parry are Ben, Anton, Koleda, Sokaku, Corin, and Piper. This group is pretty random, with the only common trait being I, I guess these agents use larger weapons. For my testing, just having a stronger parry doesn't mean the agent will be able to parry all the same number of back-to-back -back hits. I don't have Kaleida, but only Ben was able to block all 6 hits from the for Balti's combo. This might be a defense agent trait, but I can't say for sure since we only have one defense agent. To be honest, I think it's just because Ben doesn't get pushed back as far, meaning the for Balti actually can hit him with all 6 attacks. Next, let's talk about the evasive assist agents. There are four currently, and they are Billy, Grace, Rena, and Zhu Yuan. Since evasive assist is just a dodge, you do not inflict extra days since you aren't parrying the enemy. This means you also do not interrupt attack chains. Instead, these agents can use the longer bullet time to reposition. Another benefit is that evasive assist only costs one assist point against the big boss attacks. If you run a team with evasive dodge agents and the defensive stronger parry agents, you may notice you don't immediately run out of points. Possible team building consideration. Now sometimes the enemy will have a red flash instead of a yellow one. This occurs when you have no assist points left. Your agent swapping in does not parry or dodge, instead they swap in and do a perfect dodge. You can dodge counter from this, but you gotta be careful of multiple incoming attacks. Red flash attacks can also occur from enemy attacks you cannot normally parry with defensive assist. However, these moves might be countered with evasive assist. If you have an evasive assist agent on your team, they will actually swap in regardless of team order. The confusing thing is that you will only see the yellow flash if your evasive assist agent is off field. If they're on field and you still have assist points left, this is when you may see the red flash instead. The game adapts and it knows you can't do an evasive assist, so you have to settle for the perfect dodge swap instead. Thankfully, that won't cost any actual assist points. Now, the chapter 2 bosses have a lot of moves that can be parried, so if you're confused why you only see the red flashes, or the agents are swapping in the wrong order, then this is why. Perfect assists are not incredibly hard to pull off, but they grant immense satisfaction and are a fun way to keep the combat flowing by combining swap plus parry or swap plus dodge. As we discussed, there are some details that can factor into tougher fights, such as using stronger parry agents or the evasive assist agents. This is one benefit of being able to swap backwards or forwards in team order to help control who comes into parry. 
Unfortunately, you can't do that on mobile. As you start facing more aggressive enemies, you do need to keep track of those assist points. Since you replenish them through chain attacks or ultimates though, you should try to use them, and it's the dance of offense and defense that really makes this game a lot of fun. That's everything I want to talk about for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.